What's cracking, people? It's your man, Cousin T, a.k.a. the Alpha Wingman, representing high-level technicians operating globally and beyond. So listen, today I wanted to go over why select men have rosters. Now, let's uh, take this by levels because ultimately there's levels to how a man uh, travels and engages and interacts and navigates uh, the space of the, the modern world. And I realized that a lot of men, um, younger men, middle-aged men, and older men are simply not used to uh, receiving this uh, level of information or um, this depth of variety of information uh, regarding how men known as the select uh, operate in their daily lives. And what's interesting is that a lot of men who are coming into this space, um, you know, gaining information and insight um, are starting to, you know, compare the stories and the skill sets and the recommendations um, and the experiences of the uh, select men in the select manosphere to their own uh, reality, their own set of experiences and skill sets and their own interactions uh, with women over the courses of their lives. And a lot of men are coming to realize that, hey, they may be pre-select or hey, they may already be select. Let me listen and um, dialogue and offer my experiences um, or my takeaways from my own experiences in the comment section or even add to the select manosphere in the form of um, content. And so when I say that there are levels to the select man dynamic, uh, you may ask, well, well, Cousin T, what do you mean by that? I'm glad you asked. That's a great question. Here's the first level to the select man dynamic, okay? Or the select man's dynamic. Level one is getting your physical presence, uh, your charisma, and your masculinity on a positive track, meaning that you're taking steps deliberately, conscientiously, uh, you know, very methodical steps to make positive change um, in your life regarding those levels, the physical presence, the charisma, and the masculinity. Shout out to uh, Phil Master Ron Wills, who preaches this um, almost every day and actually uh, walks the talk, uh, especially when you know he reports those videos coming from the gym. But a lot of people are uh, new to this space, so uh, they don't really get why uh, we say what we say. And to those people I say, welcome, have a seat. The second level is that there are missions that test and refine uh, your select dynamic. And what do I mean by that? A good example that I like to use is, uh, and I'll link these um, podcasts down below, is that I, I recommend that every man at least attempt a threesome uh, or a successful threesome in his lifetime. Now, of course, not every man is going to do it. Not every man is up for it. Not every man is built for it. So why do I recommend it? This is in order to understand what it means to manage multiple energies at once. This is what it means to perform skill tasks under pressure to become more comfortable in those environments. And finally, the reason why I recommend that every man at least attempt to pull off a successful threesome is to realize why women desire to be led and so that he can finally understand what he himself is truly made of energetically. Like I said before, and I'll say again, threesomes are not for everyone. And this is why I recommend that you at least attempt it to find out whether or not that is in your wheelhouse. That's a part of your, uh, you know, being in your sexual lane and finding out what your sexual lane is and staying in your lane. Again, it's not for everyone. Now we're on level three of the select man dynamic, okay? And this is building your roster. Here's why. Select men for a time have found themselves attempting to juggle multiple women while maintaining their lifestyle of work, play, fitness, and travel. What I'm highlighting in the Select Man's Roster series is who 
how and why the select man benefits from the value exchange of managing key women in his world. Not surprisingly, <laughs> there are a few people that uh, stumble across my channel and uh, profess the values of committed monogamous relations with uh, one woman. And um, to them, I say, thanks for watching and Godspeed. Gentlemen, listen very carefully. No guy who wants to have basic blue pill transactional sexual relations with one woman for the remainder of his days should ever listen to a former stripper who trains men how to seduce women on a high enough level to where she will beg you to let her put money in your pants. This would not be the space for marriage counseling or traditional uh, marriage advice. Even though I'm not against marriage, I am not a dating coach. I am a master seducer and that is the energy and the experience and the skill sets that I bring to this space. I have a list of dating coaches. I have a list of counselors that I recommend and I post in the description box of every single podcast that I post on YouTube. I make that very clear. Multiple guys bring value to this space. No one man is a master of all things. But those who, for me personally, that I believe bring value and uh, wealth of knowledge and wisdom and experience from multiple disciplines in multiple areas, I put my recommendations and my suggestions in the description of every single post so that guys who are interested in a variety of different subjects have the ability to simply click on those links and then explore a, another aspect of the select man dynamic. But since we're on that subject, to those who say that people shouldn't ascribe to educational, vocational, medical, psychological advice from masculine improvement spaces, I say stop insulting your listeners by suggestive false equivalencies. I'll be making a separate podcast about that, but basically, why would I go to a football stadium and expect to see a basketball game? Why would I go to a doctor's office to get my taxes done? If you don't even have the basic components of your environment intact, why are you prioritizing getting laid, let alone seeking advanced level masculine mastery in a space like the select manosphere? Get off your couch and go holler at the dude from the Everest College commercial and then come back to sit at the feet of the masters to get gamed up about the whys of mating. Anyway, as I said in a previous podcast, there are three major components to a person's collaborative dynamic or relationship. A roster is clearly not a traditional Western relationship by any means, but in any case, the three major components are the physical aspect of the relationship, the emotional aspect, and the social. And I'll, I'll make a separate podcast on uh, these th three different aspects. But basically, when we talk about a relationship contract, these are the three components of negotiation for an advanced relationship contract. Notice I said advanced. Most people, the, oh, the average person, has no clue about why one thing is considered cheating and uh, another thing isn't considered cheating. For example, why posting a picture with somebody on your social media uh, can be considered as cheating or as uh, a woman sleeping with a different man that is not her, uh, you know, her main guy isn't considered cheating in the eyes of a woman. This is why it's important to understand these components and what your contracts with your rosters entail. But again, that's an advanced concept that mostly um, select men have the social bandwidth to maintain. So when you look at it from that perspective, having a roster is pretty simple. It's just an agreement that you have to varying degrees with uh, the women who bring value to your space. And that includes non-sexual relationships. Now, 
<laughs> if you ask me, I definitely uh, encourage you know managing relationships on multiple levels with these uh, roster positions. However, that's up to the individual. All I can do is supply you with the information about how to navigate that space. W to what degree you choose to use that is up to you. However, keep this in mind. These are the principles that allow a select man to manage his roster from a place of honesty and productivity. Now, his roster positions uh, typically know about one another if they have rank. That's a, another discussion. But the point is, women like to know where they stand in a select man's life. And of course, 99% of his women would love to be married to him or would love to have that queen bee position. But as with all things, there's levels to this select man's dynamic. This is your man, Cousin T, a.k.a. the Alpha Wingman, saying stay sharp and mission focused. Later.